I'm Indy Nidell, and this is Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer all your questions about the First World War. Po Peniamina Salovi on Facebook writes, Hey Indy, what can you tell me about German Schutztruppe? I've been reading a lot uh, into their uniforms and the different colonies that Schutztruppe served in. What I don't seem to find too much of is info on what they did or how they were viewed aside from the bit you did on Paul von Lettau Vorbeck. I also saw a bit on the Maji Maji rebellion. I guess what I want to know is if they were highly romanticized by the German public like the US cavalry was or the French Foreign Legion. The German Schutztruppe, the armed forces of the German protectorates, were formally a third branch of the armed forces after the German army and the German navy. All soldiers of the Schutztruppe were volunteers, and although paid by the German government, they were under supervision of the commanders of the colonies, the German colonies where they served. Uh, like the German soldiers who, say, served in the Ottoman Empire during the war or who served on ships of the German fleet in the far Pacific, their resistance, their fight in Africa, had some flair of the exotic and of adventure to it. Remember, this was way before you had television, internet, even radio. I mean, people heard tales about mysterious journeys or bought books and memoirs of soldiers who served overseas. It told them of foreign countries and foreign peoples, strange customs, wild animals, giraffes, vast landscapes that they never, never of course experienced themselves. Now, a lot of these stories were romanticized and exaggerated and often don't mention the bad and atrocious things that happened in colonies during the time of duty. Uh, before and during the war, uh, the service, the Schutztruppe service, had that adventurous flair to it. And politicians who favored and promoted German colonization often supported the publishing of such romantic novels and diaries. Like the soldiers of the French, Belgian, and other colonizing nations, they were seen as the bringers and defenders of civilization and order. But the public wasn't, you know, entirely blind. Uh, many people were outraged when they heard of the crimes and the violence that were done in the name of Germany in the colonies. Mark Garcia on Facebook writes, Hello, Mr. Indy. Hello, Mr. Mark. Uh, I've been curious about this during the entire First World War. One, because of the artillery that everyone had, could they hear artillery shells coming? Love your show. Uh, oh, there was only one question. Good thing he numbered it. Okay, Mark. Very, very well organized. You could hear some of them. Um, the British called the German mortar rounds of the Meinenwerfer singing or moaning minis for the whistling sound they made in flight. Uh, they, these were terrifying for new recruits, but often reassuring for veterans who could judge the impact distance by the sound of the incoming round. Um, it mostly came down to the size, the shells, and the distance of the guns. During a broad bombardment, you couldn't often distinguish single guns from one from another. And barrages usually just merged together in one big, constant growling noise. Now, sound travels slower than many of the projectiles did. So the shells often struck before you could make out the origin of, of the shot. Uh, that's what made being surprised by artillery so deadly. But smaller mortars and rifle grenades, for example, that flew in a high arc and were slower in their descent than straight artillery shells, um, usually made a distinct sound, often described as whistling or hissing. Now, sound itself is part of sensual or, say, emotional history. And it's very difficult to describe and to figure out since we don't have recorded audio clips from these times. I mean, you have to rely on the descriptions in diaries or from veterans. Callum J. Bickerton. Wow, that's a mouthful. What does the J stand for, you suppose? J. Of course, like Homer J. Simpson. Okay, Callum J. Bickerton from Facebook writes, Hey guys, I sent you a message earlier on Twitter. It's specifically for out of the trenches. Did any of the militaries of the Great War utilize Marines or naval infantry? Were these specialist troops 
consigned to the mud of the trenches or were, was their amphibious warfare skills put to use? Oh, were their amphibious warfare skills put to use? Great. Uh, love the show. I've been hooked since day one. Keep up the good work. All right. Most nations had land-based forces of their navies. Germany had the famous Navy Corps that held throughout the war the trenches on the extreme right of the German flank. Uh, they also supported operations of the aircraft and Navy in the English Channel and in the Irish Sea. Now, they were mostly made up from surplus German Navy personnel, but were later accompanied by pioneer groups and artillery corps. They often wore German field uniforms, but also the typical Navy headgear. They fought in all the battles in Flanders, and they were, oh, they were commanded by Ludwig von Schroeder, who they called the Lion of Flanders. The French had their own tradition of marine infantry regiments, sometimes called the Blue Divisions, that were often made up of colonial troops, actually. Um, the British Royal Navy had specific naval infantry brigades that, for example, fought in the defense of Antwerp or at Gallipoli, but most of them were transferred into regular troops during the war. The most famous Marines were, of course, the United States Marines. Uh, the Battle of Belleau Wood uh, became legendary for the Corps, it still is, uh, where they halted the German advance through the French lines during the German Spring Offensive in 1918. Their vicious counterattacks led to the nickname Teufelshund, which was supposedly given to them by the Germans. If you'd like to see our episode about Paul von Lettau Vorbeck, you can click right here for that. And you should go over to Facebook and you should definitely like us there and see all kinds of cool World War I stuff that Flo, our awesome social media guy, puts up. See you next time.